This is Coogan Cassius for IFL TV in association with Matthews Jim Mobile. We're in Liverpool here for the press conference between Derry Matthews and Canadian Tony Louise. With me I have promoter Francis Warren. Hello Francis. Hey there coach. Very well. Canadian. Canadian. He looks in good shape. Yeah. He looks in good shape. Confident. He's confident. It's going to be an interesting one. Do you know what? He reminds me of Peter Manfredo. He's got that, he's got that, that, that Italian look about him. And, uh, I, no disrespect to Peter, but let's hope he's, hope he's got a few more skills than Peter, though. Um, let's just, just get this out of the way. It has been a frustrating time for Derry Matthews, the whole camp, and, and yourselves as promoters as well. Uh, three different opponents in the space of three weeks, but the show must go on, and Derry is fighting. Listen, if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. Yeah. You know, it's um, not ideal, but, uh, you know, for Derry, it's not ideal for us, it's not ideal for fans. Um, but uh, we've got, you know, we've got a good fight on Saturday. You know, Tony Reese is ranked number nine by the WBA. Um, he was fighting anyway, so it's not like he's just coming off of a, you know, he's not just been sitting on his ass for the last couple of weeks. He's been in camp. He's supposed to be fighting this week in Minnesota, I believe. Um, and like, you know, one of the journalists asked why, you know, why did he take the fight? And he said, because it's for a world title. You know, if you, you know, if you, if you're a fighter and you and you say no to world title shots, something wrong with you. You think you know, you know, you know to go in there. Hang your gloves up, mate. So he's taken the fight. Fair play to him. And um, but I think, and I'm just hoping Derry, Derry bash his lumps for him because uh, you know he deserves it big time. He's had two, two long camps, lots of frustration, frustration, and uh, I, don't know, I just can't wait to see Derry pick that title up. It's going to be a very proud moment for him, for for all his fans, and and uh, I'll, I'll be I'll be very very proud for him. Definitely, be a really good night on Saturday. Can you just explain what you said in the press conference, the situation regarding uh, Perez obviously being elevated to full champion and then Richard Abra was champion in recess? Could you just yeah, so go over that Perez again? Perez has been elevated to full champion. Abra was champion in recess. He's got 120 days to fight for the full title. If he doesn't, he's out of the picture. So he's got to fight Perez, yeah. possibly, yeah? He's got to fight Perez to get his title back. Um, and then, I believe, the winner of Derry and Tony... Um, should or you know, could fight the winner. So if Abra doesn't fight, but to be honest, <laughs> it could you know, change. Should we go down yeah. that road again. Does yeah. Abra get a hat trick over us? I'm not sure, but you know, I think that would just be a discussion for for next week to see where we go from that. Because you know, for me once, for me to and all that sort of thing. It's like you know, it's, do, you, do you want to go down that route again? Give someone a third opportunity to to mess around and. Fuck about because it's just it's just it's just ridiculous. I mean, to be honest, I mean, I'm trying to not to lose my, my, my temper a bit, but you know, it's it's people's lives at stake when people you know people's well-being at stake and and their and their livelihoods. Derry Matthews has been out of training camp now for I think like 14 weeks away from his family, his children, um, you know, and and someone you know doesn't have the courtesy to pick the phone up a couple of weeks earlier when he knows he's not going to fight. You know that, I know that, everyone knows it. And for someone who's of Abra, you know, Derry's given him the credit of being the best lightweight on the planet. Several times he said that. But he's definitely not, not, the, not the most well-mannered lightweight on the planet. I know that much. But, um, oh yeah, I, do you know what? I didn't even consider that, really. If, you know, Abra is still in the picture at the time, do, do you go down that route and, and right. risk it happening again? But, it's, oh, but that's, what, that's what it's going to be now. And also, you know, it puts, puts you know, future promo- you know, if you're going to do Matthews Abra free... <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, do you know, do, do people buy into it again? You know, that's, that's, that's all yeah. the questions that Abra has now caused the problems of, of, of his actions. You know, if he's injured, he's injured, but you'd let people know in, in, in a bit better time than that. And it might not be Abra himself, it might be his team around him um, who are pulling a few strokes, but, you know, when, when someone's been away at camp for, for as long as Berry has been, um, to, 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 to have this disrespect that I think that the, the Abel's team has had for Derry is uh, it's a bit of a piss take. Mm. Because these are... I'll start flipping tables over him. <laughs> All right, Tyson. Um, <laughs> because these are two fights that were headlining shows. Obviously, Derry was yeah. co-headlining the Paul Butler Tete thing with Abel, and yeah. now he was headlining this. So it's, it's you know, it's, yeah, exactly. It's, um, it's not like... If, whatever show, even if it was a, you know, down at your call for 1,200 people, it's still it's letting people down. It's messing around with, with people who day in day out go to work to try and put these events together, who go to work, who other people go to work to try and buy, t- to, you know, to afford to buy a ticket. Um, Derry goes to work to train for the, for the event and you've got people, you know, me- messing about. So, 
what can you do? It's not like me and you, Keg, totally professional and always on point. Turn up. And if we're not going to turn up, we let people know we're not going to turn up. I don't know, actually. You let me down the other day. When? That dodgy club was supposed to go and down. <laughs> um, also on the bill this week, Liam Smith. Uh, he's chasing potential world title opportunities. We know Joe yeah. Selkirk's making a return after what, nearly, nearly two years out. Or a year yeah, and a half out. Joe's back um, after about 18 months out. He's had a few ups and downs over the last 18 months. Um, but he's back in, back in business now and uh, looks like he's... Well, hope, hopefully he's back, in, back on the, the boxing trail. Um, Danny's got him performing properly and well. He's looking good. I'm very jealous of all their suntans, though. Very jealous. Get yourself out to where they are. Yeah. Well, they're, they're all looking good, aren't they? So Goodall's much. looking for a holiday as well. Goodall's had his holiday for the year. He's had one holiday. He's not allowed anymore. <laughs> Get back in that van. Danny and Six. Um, and, yeah, Liam Smith. Uh, he's... He's has been one to watch for, for a few years now, and um, after a, a tricky year last year, um, he was able to go straight back in the gym after his last fight um, against Tal- Talarek, uh, when he beat Talarek over eight rounds, in eight rounds. Um, straight, he said, back, straight back in the gym on the Tuesday morning, um, and he's been in camp since. So he said it's the first time that's, that's, he's been able to do that since he fought boxing. Um, and you, see, you can see, his, you know, he's just told the meaner. He's, he looks like a happy man at the minute. And uh, I think we'll see the best of him on Saturday night and, uh, and going forward. Um, also on the bill, Josh Leather, uh, Macaulay McGowan. Some good. Andrew good. Kane making his debut at flyweight. Yeah, Andrew Kane's looking uh, another flyweight from Liverpool. So we're looking forward to seeing what he's, uh, he's got in his locker. And um, Josh Leather, a man from the North East, is coming down to... Uh, spread his wings a bit, so we're looking forward to seeing him. He's coming out of his shell a bit, it's nice to see. Ian Butcher uh, was originally fighting Mr. Walton. Walton, yeah. Not anymore? Not anymore. Enough said about that. <laughs> okay. okay. Focus on the positive joke. <laughs> <Okay>. Positive, positive. <laughs> um, but anyway, like I said, it should be a cracking night at the Echo Arena this Echo week. Echo Arena, yeah. Um, back at the Echo. Derry, it wasn't Derry's happy hunting ground for a little while, but he's got a, got a win there now, so... Uh, Long way on that continue. Five fights, the last five fights he's been in Liverpool. And uh, we said he was delivering a world title fight within five, five fights, and uh, here we are. So we're, uh, we've held up our end. It's down to Derry now to hold up his end. And uh, I'm sure he will on Saturday. I'm really, really, really excited for him because uh, no one deserves it more. He's, a, he's had a hard, long career, and uh, it's, it's only going to get harder now with the step up in opposition. But um, here he is. That fur coat, but he must be freezing that like, coming back from Spain to it. Uh, but yeah, we're, uh, I'm looking forward. He's in great shape. Look at him, he's in terrific shape. All right, Francis Robinson, thank you very much for talking. It's a sexy day. <laughs> thank you very much for talking to Eiffel TV. Cheers, we'll see you tomorrow. Cheers, Kate. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, apparently we haven't finished. No, we're not finished. I just wanted to tell you a tale. No, uh, just to say the weigh in is tomorrow at the Beer Keller. Um, on scales at one o'clock, so get down there from 12.30, open to public, um, come and weigh in, once the fighters are gone, stay down and have a beer after. We'll see you all there. Thank you very much. Cheers.